You don't need to grab it. What's up, guys? I figured I'd do my live. It's now or never. It's Sunday, and I'm cooking dinner because it's the only day in the week that I get to cook dinner. I have Peter here with me cooking dinner with me to help me. It'd be so nice. No, but you need to stir it. What do I take? Say hi. Hi. What do I stir it with? With that little thing. This? Yes. Yeah, Don't stir you need No. Okay. Ugh. Anyways. So. It burns. What up, Matt? That's good. You're good. Stop. All right. So, anyways, for those of you that are joining, I'm cooking my amaretto chicken. My usual. Nothing's ever going to change. What up, Rodney? Hi, William. So, anyways, we went to Boston this weekend. For those of you that didn't see that, um, sorry if I'm not looking directly at you guys because if I mess up this chicken, I'm going to be super pissed off because I don't have any other chicken to do it. And it's getting late, and I still have like 500 emails to check and 500 things to do. So, if I mess up the chicken, they will be eating Uber Eats. I'll eat Uber Eats. Shut up. No, you won't. So, Peter actually helped me with dinner tonight. So I appreciate that. He's going to continue to help me with dinner as I talk to you guys. So anyways, we went to Boston. We went to Boston to go and do like a presentation. I know it's been a long time. I don't have time. See what I'm saying? I don't have time for even my soapboxes. Isn't that kind of shitty? So uh, like wait one minute on that clock and then yeah, we'll take them out one by one with the thing. All right, so we went to Boston. We were gonna, we're, we were talking at, you know, presenting, I wanna say, whatever you wanna call it. It's kind of like a seminar. I, let's call it a seminar. And um, we were with a bunch of different entrepreneurs and everybody was able to speak, right? So, you know, when we went to this thing, to be totally honest with you guys, I was kind of hoping, and I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys about my experience. So I was kind of hoping since we were going to be around all these other entrepreneurs that I would be able to meet some other people. Not to say that we didn't meet good people because we definitely met some really cool people and it was definitely a really cool experience. But I was kind of hoping to possibly meet some other entrepreneurs that kind of endure some of the things that, you know, I personally endure throughout the week you know, where I have like 500 things to do. But it was like the total opposite of that. That's not what happened. So we went to this thing and like these people who are entrepreneurs and I don't know if they're in the midst of building their business or where they're at exactly in their business. Cause to be quite honest with you, I was too busy to, you know, have any personal conversations with all these people. But anyways, long story short, you know, they, they were able to literally disconnect for like, I don't know, like four or five days, you know, disconnect, like not talk to anybody and really pay attention to what's going on and listen to all these cool, you know, things that these people were talking about. And, you know, I haven't been able to come across somebody just yet that's as connected as me and John are. So I was kind of hoping for that, but that didn't happen. And it's been a crazy ass couple days because every time I step out of the office, the girls do a good job at holding it down, so I'm not gonna say that they don't, because they do. But sometimes I feel as though whenever me and John step out to go out of town for something, whether it's for work or if it's for work, because it's usually for work, but I always feel like, you know, something something funny happens. Something random happens. Yes, this is Disarno or however you say it. This is what you put on I put on my chicken. So anyway, but something funny always has to happen. So I mean, it's the inevitable. You know, we step out of work and something has to happen. I don't want to hear the comments on this thread either about it's it's good. Get a personal assistant, Therese, and get somebody to manage this and get somebody to manage that and da 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 da. Because it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. I haven't found my happy place yet, apparently. So until I find my happy place. It just is what it is. I'm on overload. I have a ton of shit to do. A lot of juggling to do. That water is hot. Let's pause this for a second because I'm going to tell you what just happened. So Peter is helping me cook green beans. I told Peter before he even went near the boiling water 
Da -da -da -da. I told Peter, Peter, make sure that you do not touch the water. It was this. Ow! Get it! So, Peter decided to touch the water and now he got a little baby burn. But that is the joys of cooking, right? You get a little baby burns. Not a big deal, right? Soldier. See, he's a soldier. That's what I'm talking about. Really, he's uh, just pissed off because I called him a bum today because all he's been doing is playing his video games and not doing anything productive like reading books and trying to better himself. No, do not do that. No. I do want to go on the green. You can put the corn in there. Put the corn in there. Nicely, so you don't burn yourself. So anyways, Boston was okay. It was all right. Um, nothing, there was nothing fun out there. Nothing crazy. The seminar thing was all right. It made me realize that me and John bust our ass and you know, it is what it is. So I guess I, it made me feel good about myself in that aspect. Um, so it was, it was good in that aspect. Me and John got to spend a little time together, but you know, in the, in the end result, we, uh, still had to work a lot while we're out there. So I got a lot coming up this week and you know, just, it doesn't matter how many people I hire. I still feel like I have a hundred million things to do. doesn't matter how many out overtime hours I give or how many more people I have in extra. It's just never enough. It'll never be enough, you know, I just, I just cannot seem to find my happy place. So, I do have to tell you guys about this one story, it's super, super messed up. It's messed up. So listen, so me and John are in Boston, and we're standing in line for this one thing, right? I know. So we're standing in line, right? There's a lady that is parked across the street. Now, mind you... There are, it's like a super, 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 super busy highway, okay? And so there's two roads going this way, two roads going this way, and I mean oncoming traffic, okay? You got this lady that was obviously waiting for somebody to come out of the store, parked on the side of all these four streets, okay? So me and John are over here, two lanes, a median, two more lanes, very busy traffic going back and forth, lady in car, over there on the side of the road. Out of nowhere, we hear this lady scream at the top of her lungs, and when she was like, no! Okay. So of course, everybody and their mother looks over there, and they're like, when the hell just happened? Do you know, and I'm not saying this lady was a bad mom or anything like that. I am saying this would probably never happen to me, um, because I would not let it happen to me. So I, apparently she had like a three-year-old, right? Or maybe it was four-year-old sitting in the back seat, okay, of the car. Now, I don't know how distracted you can really be to not notice that your three-year-old just open the back door and decide to run across all four lanes. And you don't notice that your child is gone from the vehicle until you start hearing honking noises. So I'm still trying to figure that one out, but that would have been absolutely horrible to see a child underneath somebody's vehicle. So for those of you out there um, that do not use the child's safety proof locks on the vehicle, I am going to advise you to do so because if you do not teach your child that oncoming traffic can kill you, then your child will open the back door while you're smoking a cigarette in the front seat and decide to run across four lanes as you jump out of your vehicle to save his dear life and trip over the median in the process of doing so. Then you have to embarrassingly, embarrassingly walk back over to your vehicle with the cross guard cop for him to show you where the child safety proof locks are on your vehicle. That had to be a little embarrassing. Good thing is, kid's okay. Bad thing is, she looked like an asshole. It is what it is, I guess. But I definitely, I did feel, I, I felt bad to some degree, I guess, because I was like, I, I just don't know how that happens. And I would have felt really bad if something actually happened to that kid. So that was pretty messed up. 
Then I will share with you my other little baby story today. This is all John's fault because, you know, everything that happens that's, you know, messed up, it's always John's fault, just so you guys know that. And if he's not watching, he will watch it later. And I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll scold me for it. You're a little crazy. <laughs> so anyway, so we have the connecting flight. And mind you guys, I am like exhausted, right? Because it's been like four days of, you know, just obviously I'm trying to multitask, like work from away on a million different things while the office is still running. And there's 500 things that I need to do. Peter's at home. I'm trying to keep him occupied. And on top of everything else, you guys have to remember that, you know, I'm not the owner. Just, I get it. Like, you know, you have to, like, work on your business, not in your business, blah, 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 blah. But, unfortunately, I still work in the business. Even after seven years of being open, I'm still in it every single day. I'm okay with that. I really am okay with that. I might bitch about it from time to time, but I am okay with it. I'm totally okay with it. I would rather be in the business and see things and fix it before it gets to a point where you can't fix it. And I do have to come to the realization that not everybody's perfect and that people make mistakes, right? So anyways, we were on a connecting flight from Philly, I think it was. Yeah. So from Philadelphia to Tampa because we took Boston to Philly and then, you know, Philly to Tampa. So anyways, I'm exhausted, okay? And you guys, I told you guys, I don't like working out, okay? I mean, I'll, I'm going to work out. My birthday is in two weeks, so I'm going to be like 30-something. 34, I think. Maybe 33. But anyways, we won't count numbers. They're not important after 30. Um, but yeah, so we're on the uh, connecting flight. We get off, and I show John the ticket. And I'm like, hey, the gate number is B10. So I showed it to him just in case, just in case he decided that he didn't get to see the ticket and that I, I messed up something. Or maybe, maybe I might have looked at the wrong ticket because that's happened before too. And that was real bad. I'll tell you how that happened in one second. So anyways, it's B10. So we're on the C floor. Okay. So we're on the C floor. We're at C28, I want to say C27, something like that. Okay. Now the way that this um, place is like, you know, laid out, you had to, you don't have to go on floors to get to B, but you did have to go to like walk pretty freaking far to get to the B's and it's B10 mind you. Okay. So we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk. We literally only have like 30 minutes in between flights. Okay. And you know, I was like, man, you know, maybe I can get something to eat. So it's like, let's hurry up and we'll go over there. So we go over to gate B10. We get to gate B10. Guess what? Everybody is waiting to get on the plane. Just kidding. There's nobody at the gate. Mm -hmm. So this is where John told me, you know what, babe? We probably should have checked the board to make sure they didn't change it. And I'm like, they do that? Now you're talking to a girl that, I mean, I don't fly. For, I'm not a frequent flyer, okay? John's went everywhere. He should know this shit. So for him to not look on the board to see was the gate was not updated and us to walk all the way to the other side of the damn airport, that's your fault, John, not mine. So anyways, we did make the plane, but I was pissed because guess what gate it was? You guys wanna guess? Any guesses? <laughs> the gate was C29. It was two friggin' gates away from the gate we got off. I was so pissed. I was so pissed, I was sweaty, I was pissed, and it was hot. Sweaty, pissed, hot, sweaty, pissed, hot. I was not happy, okay? This is not funny. That's not funny, bunny. Ugh. So anyways, I, I dealt with it. It was fine, okay? So I will tell you since I decided to share that with you because then he's going to be like, you didn't tell them your story. So I will tell you guys what I did one time and it was really, 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 really bad and John was super duper, duper, duper pissed off at me. So... But it was an accident, right? Because accidents happen sometimes. All right, so let me put this chicken on the plate so it doesn't burn because then I'm be pissed. Okay, so we were going on a vacation. This was a while ago, actually. So we were going on a vacation, and um, sorry, I'm not like the best uh, person here with my phone. So we were going on vacation. Long story short, this was bad, Becky. Check this out, right? So 
<laughs> we were on vacation and we were actually, I forget what it was, but we were obviously United States and we were getting on a connecting flight to go to whatever island it was that we were going to go to, right? So <laughs> I, my dumbass. <laughs> So we have the two tickets, right? Two tickets, right? One ticket to, okay. So anyways, he was the one that looked at the first ticket. So it's not like I remembered, like we were at gate A22 or whatever, right? So long story short, this is so messed up. <laughs> um, we only had like maybe, I want to say it was about 35 minutes to get to the gate. Now, you know, it's very important we get our vacations when we get our vacations because we only take two a year. Can you take those, take those out? Take those out with the thingy. Grab a plate. Grab a plate. Don't burn yourself again. Okay. So, anyways, so I look at you know I look at the ticket. I'm like, it's this gate, right? So we're we're rushing at this point because it's like time is ticking. Time is ticking. Okay. Now we I was tired. I have all kinds of excuses, but we just won't go down the list because I wrote them all out for him that day. So, anyways. <laughs> I decided, literally, this is the same scenario where the gate was, like, right next to the gate that we had came out of, literally, like, right next to it. So, <laughs> I was like, hey, babe, it's gate, whatever, whatever. It was like, so, we had to go downstairs, and we had to go through here, and this is, the, it shows you this sign here, da, 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 da. Me, I did the stupidest shit ever. So, I take us out of this door <laughs> it says no re-entry I should have knew better because this is the stupidest thing I might have done like ever it says no re-entry on the door right so I go out the door we're busy we're checking emails da -da 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 -da, whatever whatever and then John's like what gate did you say it was again I'm like it was a whatever a 12 or a 14 whatever he goes that can't be the gate and I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, that can't be the gate. It's just, it doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, well, I'm like, this is the way to the gate A. Come to find out that I accidentally pushed us through the doors to go outside the airport. So you know what that meant? We had to go back through security. And the security had a long ass line. So just think, you go to an airport, you have to go through security to get on the plane. Once you go through that security, all you got to do if you got to go on the connecting flight, even if it's going out of the country, usually you just got to, you know, go to the next flight. You don't have to go through security again because you already went through all security. I was almost in tears, guys, seriously, because John was so pissed off at me, like so pissed off on a scale of one to 10, like a 25. He's like, if we miss this play, I swear to God, I'd be so pissed. Da, da, da. So I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I go up to the guy that's, you know, handling all the security stuff. I'm like, sir, sir, listen to me. I'm like, I really, really need to make it through security. I cannot wait in this line. He goes, ma'am, everybody has to wait in line. I'm like, listen to me. This flight is going to leave. I went outside of those doors over there. I shouldn't have went outside those doors, but I did. Here I am. I am through security already. I'm not carrying anything on me. Please let me through. I really want to go on vacation. Please, 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 please. <laughs> we literally ran, 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 ran as fast as we possibly could. And it was uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. It was fun. So me and John have this, you know, you know, it's, it's a gate thing. It's a fun gate game that we play when we get off the plane. So anyways, that was fun. Gave me my exercise for the day. So Boston was great. You know, it didn't really uh, take anything crazy from it, to be honest with you. But it was a really cool experience to go to Harvard and check it out. You know, all these cool Harvard kids, you know, they're so smart. Um, but... You know, I, I came back with a Harvard shirt for Peter, like, you know, from the airport. And so he's like, I want to go to Harvard. And I'm like, yeah, no, you're going to be going to a local college, you know, here in like my vicinity where I have full control over what you do and who you talk to. Right. 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 Peter says yes. Mom. Yes. Peter says yes. Right, Bunny? You know, you know that. Who's Bunny? You know, Bunny across the street. She goes by Bunny. Peter's oh. asking who you are, by the way. So it's been quite an eventful weekend. So it was, it was, it was all right. Now for my wonderful, wonderful week. But it makes me feel a little bit better that I'm not crazy. Okay. Because I thought that maybe I was just an entrepreneur with poor time management skills. But really, I am just overloaded. That's what it is.
Because there's plenty of other people that are entrepreneurs that I met this weekend that can definitely, definitely take time to sit down and listen to eight hours of speeches. And me, unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time. So I am going to share with you guys, for those of you that might write me a text message or a Facebook message or something, I swear to God, I'm not ignoring you. Sometimes maybe, but most of the time not. Um, but that's why it's cause I have a bazillion things that I need to do. John and I have some things in the works. It's some special stuff in the works. So everybody keep your fingers crossed that everything goes the way that it should, because if it does, we've got some really, really, really big things in the works. It's some big stuff. So we'll be hopefully solid trying to set up our future so that we don't have to work 20 hours a day. So I'm hoping that uh, I can find the energy in myself to finish cooking this lovely meal and do my 500 emails and set everybody up for tomorrow because they obviously need me to be involved. <laughs> uh, I am going to share with you guys what happened at the office. I probably shouldn't, but I am going to tell you guys because I just can't help myself. I, I really can't. <laughs> I really can't. I'm going to tell you guys what happened at the office. So... I'm going to make it a short version because I, I lo listen, before I even say anything, I love my girls at the office. So all my girls that are watching this, I love you guys. I accept you for who you are. Okay. But somebody was ever so kind enough. Okay. Somebody that must have been very hungry. Okay. The girls in the office must have been extra hungry to make this decision. Okay. But somebody decided to schedule a meeting for a person to come in to our office to give us a demonstration on something. And they were gonna bring all the girls breakfast. Isn't that nice? That's really nice. It's like the drug rep, you know? Like they bring you stuff. Cool. So they bring you donuts or they bring you breakfast or whatever. And then usually after something like that, you know, you sit down with them and you go, you listen to whatever it is they have to say and see if it's something you can implement in your practice or something you can use in your practice. And they basically want to sell you something. Cool. Not a problem. I get it. Okay. So anybody want to explain why that meeting was A, scheduled without me knowing, B, scheduled with me out of town, C, why that meeting took place at all? <laughs> so explain to me how I'm on FaceTime with my girls going through the day, trying to make sure everything's good. And this is the morning that I have to deliver this speech in front of these couple hundreds of people. Me and John are trying to rehearse it. I'm sure you guys saw how like hard we were working on that when room service showed up. But anyways, guys, <laughs> explain to me why I am on FaceTime with my girls. I love my girls. I love, I love my girls. Let me just reiterate it one more time. I love my girls, <laughs> but explain to me why I'm on FaceTime with them and I'm talking, going over, hey, this is what I need done, this is what's going to happen today, yada, 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 and then I hear in the background, Chenille, my nurse practitioner, she's like, oh my God, breakfast sandwiches. I'm like, oh my God, breakfast sandwiches. Where'd you guys get breakfast sandwiches? Oh, this person, you know, they drove two hours over here to give a demonstration on something for you guys. And they said they were going to bring us breakfast. I'm like, oh, cool. And uh, who would they schedule that with? You guys do all know that I am the gatekeeper. Now, I'm, I have girls at my front desk. I have girls that answer my phone. But I am the gatekeeper. Now, if you ever want to meet with John, you go through me. Anything you want to schedule? You go through me. If it doesn't make it to my little black book, it doesn't exist. So explain to me why everybody is eating a breakfast sandwich while we have two representatives that I have no idea who they are sitting in my lobby ready to show me and John a demonstration that we are not there to see. <laughs> I hope breakfast was good. You girls are gonna get it on Monday. So anyways, I was pissed off. I'm not going to lie. I was super pissed off because I'm like, guys, this is like, are you guys really that hungry? Because if you guys are that hungry, I promise you, I will buy you all breakfast. You do not need somebody to bring you breakfast here and show us a demonstration on a machine that I am more than likely not going to buy. Why? 
Why would you guys do that to me? Why do I deserve this lovely treatment? Why? And you guys wonder why I'm freaking crazy all the time. This is just an example. I just don't share it with everybody because it would be horrible if I shared everything. But this is an example. Yes, bunny. This is, I wasn't even doing this. I was like looking this close to, me, to, my, to my FaceTime to find out how good their breakfast sandwiches were and I hope they were worth it because I was gonna choke somebody. Somebody was going to be choked like this. Demonstration for who? For John and Therese? Yeah, they're in Boston. Did you want to show them on FaceTime? Oh, that's right. They don't have time for that. Oh my God, I can't. So I will re re recap this. The, the, I'm telling you, man, if I ever die, it's definitely due to, to one of these girls. They did it to me, 100%. My blood pressure shot up to 300 over 180 and, and boom. Vessel in my face just pops, dead, done, hopefully. I leave you guys with something good. I, I'm leaving Peter here. He, he's going to be good and, you know, take over the world. <laughs> but seriously, guys, I mean, come on. This is, I mean, this is what I'm saying, you know? I, and then I got to play cleanup. So now I got to reach out to these people so I don't look like an asshole. Let's just call it what it is. And figure out what to say to them. Hmm. I still haven't, I, I honestly, I've been so damn busy. I haven't even thought of a reason or what to say yet. How did you, yeah, what? To, to. Hmm. So anyways, that's my answer as of right now. If you guys have any cool answers that I can come up with to, you know, make me look awesome, please share them with me on here on my thread. Anyways, that's my soapbox in a short version since I want to go eat dinner and then go work on my stuff until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And then tomorrow, hopefully close this really, 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 really big deal that we got going on. If we do, I will finally share it with you. If we don't, well, then we'll just wait till the next big deal comes around. What up, Justin? Hi, Clara. Becky, Bunny, Michael, I did not open your message, but I did see it, and I have not read it yet. Um, and uh, yeah, Justin, my eyes are much better. Thank you so much for my drops. They're amazing, minus the fact that they drip down the back of my throat and make me feel like I have a sinus infection 75% of the time. But my eyes are not dry. Anyways, guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful week. I'm sure I can hop on here at some given point in time during the week and say hello and catch you guys up on all the rest of the fun stuff that happened in Boston this weekend. But until then, have a wonderful night. Peter says, seriously, say bye. Bye. You see what I'm saying? Do you see this? I need more patience. Can I buy patience? Can I buy patience on aisle three at the patient store? <laughs> Anyway.